G'day and welcome back to the Gulag. My name is Ryan and here we tell true crime to come out of Australia. Now, if you're claustrophobic or you have an issue with deep and dark waters, then please do not continue watching. South Australia known for its stunning landscape and natural wonders. But beneath its surface lies a dangerous and mysterious world, the underwater cave system known as the Shaft. Now the Shaft has claimed 16 lives and has a mysterious energy about it that divers claim they have seen shadow figures, heard underwater screeching and even heard screams that weren't there. It's also had experienced divers fly all around the world to this site and then pull out of the dive. Now, the shaft spans over 800 meters and is one of the most extensive cave systems in Australia. With an average depth of 36 meters, it is a challenging and exhilarating dive for even experienced divers. But what lives beneath these dark waters that has so many divers so scared as soon as they arrive? Now the cave system consists of a series of interconnected chambers and tunnels, with the deepest point reaching a depth of 65 meters. The water in these caves is crystal clear, providing a breathtaking view of the limestone formation. However, the beauty of this cave system comes with great risk. The narrow passages and tight crevices can be disorientating for even the most experienced divers. The cold water, the strong currents and low visibility make it incredibly challenging to navigate through the caves. As where there is an underwater body of water, there is a lot of silt buildup on the rocks and if you disturb this silt, it completely removes all visibility and you're now finding yourself in pitch blackness where it could take minutes or even up to 30 minutes of precious airtime until it settles. Now, in 1973, the shaft was completely closed permanently, where four experienced divers tragically lost their lives while exploring the cave. Now, over the years, it's believed to be a total of 16 lives have been claimed by this treacherous cave system. The dangerous conditions of the shaft have earned its reputation as one of the most hazardous dive sites in the world. The warning signs at the entrance serve a severe reminder of the risks involved and it is essential to heed to them as they have many different rules for the three different stages of the cave. In a today's story, we're going to be going over the diving incident that took four divers' lives and ultimately had this hell hole closed forever and deemed illegal to enter. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this dark, deep, disgusting story. Okay, before we begin, for the non-diver people out there like myself, there are three vital bits of information you need to know first. Number one, the hole was discovered in 1938 by an Australian farmer who was leading his horse across a paddock. Now, when a bunch of them walked around a patch of ground, the farmer noticed and knew that horses avoid all danger and threats. So he went and had a closer look and upon further inspection, he noticed a great big gaping hole, 1.2 meters wide in diameter, that was right in the middle of the field that led down into a large body of water as the sunlight shined directly into it. Now, once it was known to the public, it attracted divers from all over the world wanting to be the first to explore this cave system as the entrance looked like something out of a movie set. And not before long, a small team of experienced cave divers from Europe mapped out the entire tunnel system and broke it down into three stages. Now, stage one, the opening, a huge underground utopia with a safety line coming from the hole entrance. Then there's stage number two, the intersection, also known as the rock pile, as there is a huge rock pile down at the bottom that splits off into two tunnels, the west tunnel and the east. Now the west tunnel is 75 meters deep and known to be very hard to navigate as it's almost impossible to turn around at the end without taking off your gear. And then there's stage three, the east tunnel. 
the dangerous one, which has heaps of false domes in it. Now, false domes are tunnels that ultimately lead to a dead end. You'll often see them on the ceilings of your cave, and if you go down them, it can lead you astray, and then often divers will run out of air because they've gone the wrong way. It's also very narrow, and you need to mix a special mixture of nitric oxide and oxygen to avoid getting nitric oxide poisoning. Now, what is nitrous oxide poisoning? Okay, so if you have too much nitrous in your blood, you will get very confused, you'll get dizzy, and often divers, when they experience this, they don't know which way is up and which way is down, and they become very disorientated. It's a very dangerous condition to have under these depths, and if you have it, you need to get to the surface immediately, because what has happened in the past is often you'll hear about divers getting the bends or nitrous oxide poisoning and they actually take off their mask believing that they're not even underwater. So in 1973, eight experienced Australian divers gathered together to plan an expedition to go and visit the shaft. Now this was the incident that ultimately closed this diving hole forever. So Glenn and Larry were the two most experienced divers with all the knowledge that were leading this expedition. Now they jumped through the certain loopholes and procedures to get permission to go and visit stage three, but where they were denied and only granted permission to visit stage two as they lacked underwater cave system diving experience. Now that was because all of these eight divers had all of their experience in the open water on the ocean. Now it's important to note when you're going in these freshwater caves, you actually need to mix a less nitric oxide level in your gas tank so you can avoid getting the nitric oxide poisoning we spoke about earlier. But none of these eight experienced divers knew this information. So they've gone to the hole and they've set up. Now to get down into stage one, you need to abseil down where you'll tread water and then your gear will be lowered to you by a friend or someone up the top, usually your safety supervisor, and then you'll put the gear on whilst you're treading water, attach your scuba tank, chuck it in your mouth, and you're good to go. Now when they got there, none of them knew this. So getting down into the hole was actually quite a lengthy experience, which means they were running out of sunlight. Now it's important because the sunlight and the ambient light that comes through the hole gets you visibility basically up until the intersection before you need to go down the west or the east shafts. So once all eight of them have gotten down into stage one, they're now in this breathtaking scenic environment where they've got this big open area and it's absolutely breathtaking. So they're around, they're taking photos, they're taking selfies, they've got their flashlights on and exploring the cave system when it was time to decide, let's go down and visit stage two. Now stage two is just the intersection. You're not allowed to go down the west or the east tunnel, but you're allowed to kind of peer over the top of it and look down into the black abyss because apparently that is an absolutely exhilarating experience. So Glenn has given the signal and they've all headed down to the intersection and made it there safely. Now, whilst they're peering around and having a little bit of an explore whilst they've got quite a bit of oxygen in their tank, they're all taking pictures and creeping down. But Glenn stated there was this one point where they're all looking down the east tunnel, which is the most dangerous tunnel, and out of nowhere, Larry just started heading down it. Like, he just started swimming into it. And with this, four other divers followed. Now Glenn noticed this and was thinking to himself, what are you guys doing? He's flashing his flashlight and he's trying to get their attention. Meanwhile, they're actually kicking up a bunch of soot in his face and as he started to see their fins disappear, he knew he was losing sight of them and there was nothing Glenn could do. Not only that, Larry had made it down first. Now what ended up happening was Larry got a little bit of a panic and he's turned around to where he's facing another diver. Now with this, there's absolute panic and pandemonium just setting in because you can't see in front of your face in that pitch black tunnel. So everyone's got their flashlights on and flashing them in front of their faces. Meanwhile, Glenn is at the intersection watching this all go down. So he's looking into the black abyss and he's just seeing confusion going everywhere, only about 10 meters in front of him. 
but he knows if he goes that 10 meter leap, it's almost walking into a death trap. Now, whilst Glenn is peering down into the black abyss, he actually sees a diver coming out of the black soot and made his way past him. Now, the, that diver was actually Larry. And now there's four other divers stuck down into this hole and there's nothing he can do about it. So they're flashing their lights when Glenn saw something that haunted him forever. He's seen a diver turn around slowly in the black abyss and he was shining his light on him, flashing him, trying to get his attention. And he's seen the diver just take off his mask and start talking underwater like there was someone in front of him. Now with this, this is where the legends and the myths come from, but what actually was happening was these four divers were experiencing nitric oxide poisoning. They were completely delirious and they did not know what they were doing or where they were. And that's why they started spearing off in all different directions. Not only that, one of them was later recovered, was found in one of those false domes. So with this, Larry and Glenn, they were at the intersection, they were running out of air and they had no choice but to return to the surface. Now when they got to the surface, there was three other divers there awaiting for them, being the safety soup and the other two divers that turned around when it was the good time to turn around. And that's when they knew they lost the four lives of the other divers in the East Tunnel. Now, it took 11 months for them to recover all four bodies. And once they pulled them out of there, they zipped this place shut. And what they actually do is they put a concrete border around it and then they chuck a cage and weld it down shut and put a sign on there saying no entry and it's actually illegal. And that is for the safety of the divers that are urging for that adrenaline that wanna go down and explore these caves for whatever reason that may be. But that is the story of the shaft guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember, please hit the like button, drop a comment. I always reply even to the haters out there. And just for the haters that are watching, thank you. You're helping the algorithm every time you feel the need to drop a nasty comment. Alrighty then, I'll be back again tomorrow with a huge announcement as we have our very first brand deal and it is a supplement one. That is a dream for me come true. All right, I'll see you guys again tomorrow.